um, yeah, uh, also I wanted to uh, check out what's the usual process on the uh, questions. Uh, does Zoom have that raised hand uh, feature? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so um, yeah, we're going to talk about offline resilience with service workers. And um, this topic is divided into two parts. Um, yeah, because I realize it's too big to, to cover in one session. So today we would talk about basics and next session would be for more advanced usage. And regarding questions, uh, yeah, you are free to uh, to raise hand during the like my presentation, and at some point I will stop do, during the uh, topics, and would uh, yeah would invite you to ask questions. Yeah, so I'm open to to make this more a discussion wise, I guess, than a lecture. Yeah, so let's go. Um, Okay, so that's agenda. Probably you saw this in the invitation. We're going to check what's special about offline experience. Uh, going to look at the service work a API specification, uh, how it's defined and what's inside. Uh, we'll check lifecycle for service worker in more details. Briefly see cache API because it's pretty st straightforward. And we'll talk some uh, about gotchas and pain points when working with service workers. And hope we will have some time for some demo uh, on my local environment, just to see all above in the action. Okay, then to offline experience. So it's not something that has uh, regular indication and better to think about connectivity or its absence. Uh, that's as something on or off, not as something as on or off state, but it's uh, constantly changing its state to on and off. And Urban Dictionary even has a term for this Li-Fi for, for the state when your device indicates that it has connection, but in fact, you cannot use any network services or load any page. Sometimes it might be because of the network quality, uh, low bandwidth or and high latency would probably look for users as no connection, even though the device might indicate there is one. Uh, it might be also the network access and your website can cannot have access to some resources that it expects to. Uh, for instance, in Ukraine, uh, many Russian resources are blocked. And if websites which, which using um, Yandex Analytics are trying to load, they probably show blank page until they got the comprehensive response that Yandex Analytics script cannot be loaded. So it's not super friendly for users. For them, it seems like uh, this site is not working. Why? And also your server might experience outage or slowness, or that might be true for some proxy in front of it. And likely if your website uh, can do something without uh, that server support, so you would want to, to do something called graceful degradation. So you would offer something for users on your website without like, connecting to network. And the other paradox of offline, um, different offline flavors is that people's, people tend to use mobile devices more and more. And some of them consider it uh, their primary device and even use it at home, even they have other options. But then they go uh, like in minus one floor, they enter elevator or travel underground or go as high as 18th floor and their connection is like non-existent, but not the demand for that connection. And other paradox of such devices is that they're usually quite powerful. Uh, they have a lot of processing power and memory, and then network is just <laughs> spotty for them. It's not as good as the device processing powers. So it's devices faster than network. And there, uh, it's uh, why I'm on this topic. 
uh, basically, uh, we're working with a large uh, US-based educational company. And one of the products they offer is the website for teachers in, in US schools. And they pr primarily are used on the devices like iPads and Chromebooks. Usually powerful enough, but still more closer on the mobile side than the like, huge <laughs> processing power computers. And also Wi-Fi, school Wi-Fi is quite sporty. And basically that web website is quite simple uh, like by the usage. Uh, so teachers uh, assess students, like uh, asking the, them questions or listen how they read. And they need to record uh, the results to the website. And one of the business requirements is that the assessment session for the student shouldn't be interrupted if the connection was interrupted. So teachers need to record everything in real time to, to the website. And we offer for that purpose offline first application when they, they, they can do almost everything on the website and network is treated only like an enhancement when, when they know that, yeah, that's, that's a good time to, to update my application because I have network. So service worker API. Uh, now it's considered a um, like primary standard for resolving offline capabilities, offline functionality. Uh, and uh, first it's published, uh, first draft was published in May, 2014. And it was created by Google, Samsung and Mozilla engineers at that time. And now it's, uh, not the draft, but official working uh, standard. But at that time, it was going to replace application cache, which was the standard at that point. And it had some issues which Service Worker API were trying to resolve. But then uh, since 2014, it turned so much more than it was initially intended because like, it was so powerful. So what's, what's it get actually used for it? Yeah, uh, it would be accurate to say that it's uh, service workers do client side caching, as simple as that. But uh, if you have client side caching, it may be used for multiple purposes. Uh, first of all, it's uh, just performance for website, which the, uh, use stable connection. Basically, if you load some resources from cache, it should be faster than loading from network. For example, when user return to your website for the second time, you have some cache and they don't have to wait for everything to be loaded again from network. Next, you could build offline first application when the network um, is treated as a enhancement which might be not available for all users or not always available. So most of the website content is coming from cache. <coughs> and later on, uh, uh, like the community discovered that uh, they can be used for local development to do uh, compiling of client-side code um, and dependency management on, on the fly. Like, um, working with the JavaScript flavors like CoffeeScript or CSS preprocessors, doing that on the flying conversion to uh, like ES5 probably. Um, then service workers are uh, used for background data synchronization, uh, periodic or on demand. Also we'll talk about this some more later. And web push notifications. Uh, long wanted feature for uh, progressive web apps to um, compete with uh, native applications. So it's possible with service workers. And also there is a uh, load balancing example. Not sure if anybody uses this on production. Basically the service worker can decide from which server to download some heavy resource based on the like, server status and yeah, only less loaded. 
so what's inside the API box? Surprisingly, there are two APIs, Service Worker API and Cache API. Yeah, because I, as I mentioned, uh, they were going to be used together for, for client-side cache. And also they make use of the uh, other technologies as promises and fetch API, which I'm not going to stop here in details. Uh, hope most of you are familiar with them as well as um, this error functions and async await syntax, which will pop up in some examples. And besides that, um, service workers are used for basis for other features and for other specifications that um, strongly rely on the service workers. So they can provide push notification and uh, re react on push messages from server, uh, do background synchronization sync. And um, by its day and nature, service workers are web workers. So some features of web workers are available to them, like uh, messaging to other scopes and um, yeah, importing scripts, I guess. So today we're going to talk about these two. And background sync is uh, for the next session, which will be uh, in September, I guess. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Maybe at, th at this point uh, you have some questions. Yeah, I didn't see raised hands, but yeah, you're free to ask me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so. So if you were at some fancy AT weekend event that software used to hold annually, and someone casually asks you, so what's the service worker thing anyway? So yes, probably you should say that it's programmable network proxy in the browser. That's accurately sum up what it is by its nature. But also it's, uh, um, a JavaScript file, separate JavaScript file that you would register in a special way for a particular URL uh, of your website. And that JavaScript file probably would handle the proxy and intercepting requests and modifying responses and yeah, do, doing something else, redirecting. Um, service workers also run as the, as the functionality they uh, allocate the uh, browser allocates separate thread for them so they that's uh, separate from the main thread which renders the website so they have their own global scope which is not uh, shared with windows scope you basically cannot share variables with, between windows and service working but yeah basically there is a way to communicate between them but it's not as trivial uh, service workers are asynchronous, uh, so any synchronous API are not available for them. In particular, uh, access to local storage is not there. And they have no DOM access, uh, naturally, because DOM, working with DOM is synchronous, so they cannot do it. Yeah, but still there are ways to, to update DOM. Uh, using messages, the main window, you can update DOM. And they are event driven, uh, meaning that um, if, if they not processing any event, we will see later on what, what they can be. Uh, they will be shut down by the browser to um, save up some memory. So it's very useful for mobile devices, which may not have as much memory. So browser just decide, yeah, it's service workers is idle. So I can close the thread and start up it again when there is an event to process. So for browser support, luckily <laughs> since 2014, uh, service workers are supported for major, all major browsers. Today, uh, the last one probably was Safari, which introduced support in iOS um, 14, um, iOS 12. Yeah, as well as a proper support. And also 
since service workers are so powerful, they basically can hijack connections, filter responses, or respond differently. And that power can be abused by uh, in man in the middle attack. So they should be run on HTTPS, on secure connection. So there is no way by specification, the way it defines, there is no way to register the service worker in, in secure connection. Although for, um, for local development, it's, you still can use uh, insecure connection just for local host. Mm. Yeah, but, um, if no questions, we can go to life cycle. Okay. So we already established that service worker is a special JavaScript file and uh, it has separate thread where the JavaScript file is executed. So it has separate lifecycle, which is not similar to what you would expect for, for your main window or main website. So at first you have to download the, that JavaScript file. And after that, uh, it starts installation event. Um, installation phase, but there is also an event that you as a developer can listen to and do something uh, during that installation phase. When installation is done, usually for the first, like first installation, uh, meaning that website didn't have service work and now it's uh, trying to install this. So then it will come, there will be activation phase. It also has an event and you can do something during that phase. And if anything goes wrong during those first three steps, service worker might be discarded by the browser. And yeah, we will check in more details uh, what could happen <laughs> that it might be discarded. But if everything went smoothly, then you would have active working control and service worker. And you can do uh, something with it, um, yeah, proxy as a basic example. And that proxy uh, basically means listening to fetch event and reacting somehow on the request which, which associated with that fetch event. You can do listening to sync event, which is for background sync. There's also push event for reacting on server, push notifications, push messages. And there is also message event for communicating between uh, different threads, um, like uh, main window and, and service work. And if service worker is not handling any of those events, uh, it will be terminated by the browser. When it's not handling, like user uh, left the, that opened up and just went to another page. So there is no like <laughs> fetch event going on, probably sync event uh, if it's not active and there is no push. So browser can shut down service worker. And then if there is any of this event, service worker will be woken up and yeah, it will process the event, but it will never won't go to the these stages so it, it has only one install event in its life cycle then it just uh, like initiates wakes up probably a better definition so it's there but uh, yeah inactive state so let's look in the details for each stage um, first the download how to download the service worker script uh, basically, by API, you do need to register your service worker file. That's the script, uh, which is service worker itself. But we write this registration code in our main uh, window, like uh, one of the JavaScript file that are part of the website. It's a good practice to check if service worker API is available. Uh, overall in Navigator. So it's part of uh, Navigator. And also one of the recommendations is to register service worker on 
after website has loaded and like showed first view to the user. So we don't uh, stack any network requests uh, coming from service work, worker, even if the user just need to see like very first view of the website. So that's why there is event listener for load event. So when website renders and completely loaded, then we will start to uh, the register step. But it's not the requirement to do registration on this step. Basically, you can do it anywhere in your JavaScript code. So we <laughs> register service worker. Essentially, that's a synchronous API. So that operation would return a promise and it, it would carry re registration instance uh, of the registered service work. And we can do something about it. Uh, we'll, for example, check its scope, the URL which service work in, in controls. So it's origin and the path. In our example, it's probably the, the root path because we didn't have like the, so that's the default setting if that's a JS file is in the root of the website. So I was going to be the root. And of course, promise, promise may be rejected. So we might want to handle this um, in more advanced way than logging the error, yeah, but better to handle it anyway. So we don't throw errors without uh, handling them, yeah, especially in event listeners. And after downloading the script uh, for service worker, it will start installation. And before we get to the checking the code, um, let's see what install event and activate event have in common. They both uh, inherit extendable event interface, I guess, which has interesting method wait and deal. So, since service worker is event driven, we need to say somehow to browser that this event <laughs> need to like, uh, happen during some time. Usually it's until promises result. So we use wait until method to and supply the promise to it uh, so that install event or activate event uh, is prolonged uh, until the promise is settled. So that's the, the way to, to say to browser, do not shut down the service worker. It's doing some important stuff. So how we use installment? Uh, usually that's the event listener. So now it's a service worker code. Uh, so we registered it and now it's uh, doing something for us. So we can listen to install event. We will have instance of the event as the in the listener and you can call that wait and deal method. And here for on installation, we usually do precaution, meaning that um, we take all of the static resources for our app website. Sometimes it's called uh, application shell. Uh, so here's the index HTML and JS file, but probably that can be more uh, all GS, all CSS files, all images, if you have any fonts or whatever else. And we put them in cache um, and it, uh, they will be just there. So, and, and the next step we would see how we can read from cache, but uh, what's important here, how to put something in cache, yeah. Cache is also synchronous because that's a synchronous uh, service worker file. So we, first we need to open cache. Um, here it's, it has a name of pre-cache version one. It can be any name, um, basically you define the name. When we get um, cache uh, instance, we add all URLs. So the, this add all method, it'll take the ar uh, array list of the URLs, we'll make requests to these URLs with fetch, yeah, probably, and we'll put the cached responses to, to the cache. Basically, at the time when installment has finished, we would have all of the website resources cached um, yeah, and available for reading for responding from proxy. 
Yeah, and here we handle catch event, uh, handle promise rejection with catch. Um, usually we would want to do this so that wait, wait until it won't receive rejected promise because it would say that install event has failed and service worker cannot go to other phases. So it won't activate as the next step just because installation has failed. So we would want to, to handle this. And activate event um, looks pretty similar by the usage. Uh, we have event listener with activate um, event name. We have event and even wait until to prolong the event lifetime. But what's uh, activate is used for? Usually for cleanup. It would make more sense if we understand the um, update flow. Um, so we'll get to this later on, but um, on the activation, usually we clean up caches that are not in use. So here we take all caches, filter them by some condition, usually by name, and delete the whole cache if this, this is outdated one. So uh, after the activation, like we do, we do the cleanup and activation and after service work is active, so no leftovers should be from the old version. And yeah, let's go to fetch, I guess. Um, yeah, when we put some something to cache, we can now uh, respond uh, from cache. And fetch event also has some family history. It's extendable event, so it has wait until to, to say that Fetch event handling is in progress, so let's uh, let's keep the service worker uh, alive until we are done. And also, we hand respond with a method that um, override the fault handling of fetch, uh, meaning that the fault what's the fault behavior of fetch doing the network request. Yeah, but we can override this. We can respond with something else. Uh, with cache response or with some predefined um, message, I guess, or update the header of the response. Yeah, anything. And uh, it, usually it's useful to have a request that browser intends to make um, when we get to, uh, to fetch event. Um, we may, may use it to decide if you want to cache or if you want to read from cache or if it's a cross-region request and we cannot do anything about it. We, we can or we just need to handle it differently. Yeah, and we can just replay this request in the with fetch again. So let's see some code. Uh, on fetch, we also can do caching, meaning that we could put something to cache. Uh, this time it would be runtime caching because as request comes in fetch, we can cache the response. And also we can uh, do reading from cache, right? Uh, so we on pre-caching, uh, on install event, we did pre-caching, we have something in cache here, yeah, but it's time to respond with that cached uh, response. So we have event listener for fetch and it's, it will handle only get request because if it's not get, it, it would just exit from the handler. We would open cache with other name, but uh, yeah, it can it can be other name that uh, pre-cached. Uh, we could have uh, multiple caches, multiple unique names uh, for one origin. So it's fine to that that we read another cache. Just <laughs> we need to know that something there is in the cache. So we read and we look up if that request is in cache. For this, we use match method from cache API. We provide the request and it's like the key in the object. If there is something, we would receive a promise, but here it's a wait for simplifying the, the view. Uh, we would receive a promise with the by the cached response, like the, the response instance, or it would be undefined. So if there is a response, we would return. Uh, that's basically the result, the question of the, um, uh, like how to read something from, how to return cache response, that's that's how. And also uh, besides the return and cache response, we would cache, cache it again, like 
get the fresh copy. For it, we do cache at same request. So there will be made requests in the background uh, and the response will be updated in the cache. So C, we return cache response, but we don't wait for cache to be updated. So that's a nice thing for the user. It would seem for them that uh, fetch happen faster, even though there is a network request which will update the cache. Yeah, and if there is no cache response, we just use the default behavior for fetch, just call fetch with the request. The, the same request that the browser wanted to make. Yeah, then we have discarded state. So several things can go wrong during service worker life cycle. Uh, at first, we might fail to download the script itself. Um, for example, with 404 error, if we just forgot to deploy it, yeah. <laughs> so there is no, the, the script itself when browser tries to download it or uh, the path to that script is run. So yeah, basically it's same as uh, 404 error. Then on installation, we saw that uh, there might be a rejected promise. Um, yeah, if some of the dependencies like the index.js file fail to download, so uh, yeah, we same 404 or any other error. So wait and deal method to receive rejected promise and installation phase would fail overall. And also uh, we might not be able to install the dependencies because there is no space in the user device. Uh, meaning that or our cache is uh, so full or user device has allocated like not so many space for, for the cache. Uh, usually it would be a quote exceeded ex exception, which we might handle to say something to user that you have no space for, for caching or we might suppress it and just not the use service working because there is no like space for caching. And the first three, three reasons look like dying in the incident. The last one is like uh, growing old, service worker is growing old and yeah, gets retired uh, just because there is a newer version that can replace it. So it's not, discarded state is not properly an error. It might be like nature of process in the service worker lifestyle. So let's get to that new version to date flow. The service workers, it's um, the counterintuitive because it's not the, the same as you would expect the regular website to update. Um, when you just refresh the hit refresh button and you get the latest code. For website with service workers, it's more accurate to think like applications and you cannot update applications when they are open, you need to close them. And if you if you use Chrome regularly and you know how, how it updates, so there is a, a green icon on the right, top right, uh, saying that update is available and you know it won't be applied um, when you're in the middle of something, right? You need to close everything or press that button so Chrome closes all the windows and uh, applies in the update. So same thing with service workers. The idea here is that you need to be sure that but no, they, the API uh, defines update flow th that way that you are sure that only one service worker version is running at the time. So you have your data consistent and your uh, code consistent. Uh, it's not like part of the application is version one, part of version two. No, it's like always only one version. So when um, the updated like version two service worker is deployed, probably version one is handling the controlling the page. It's handling some fetch requests, and uh, version two will go all of the phases that the version one did. So it will do installation and at some point it will activate, but between installation and activation, there is waiting phase that's new one comparing to the initial installation. 
And this phase means that uh, version two waits when you close all, all of the tabs, all of the windows with the website so that it's safe to new version to be applied. And if, for example, service worker version two fails on the installation, you can be sure that version one would be still controlling the page. So you won't be left without any <laughs> service worker. You would still have old one, but your code would be version one as well. So it's safe update. And when service worker um, gets to, uh, version of two gets to that activate stage, yeah, you close all the tabs and open them again. Version one will become will become just discarded. So that's the nature of the end process of the service work. And with that weight, uh, it, it's um, yeah natural way to uh, natural way to skip the waiting like to for promote service worker from waiting to activate it. It's closing all the tabs or going to out of scope URL, out of scope of service worker scope. Basically for service worker, it means that, yeah, you are not looking for, for that website. So it's safe to update. So that's the same thing. But also there is more risky way to do manual skip waiting. So there is a method which you would call in service worker uh, code usually uh, on installation, I guess. So before activation, there is no event for waiting phase. So there is only for installation. So you would call it on installation. And it would automatically swap the service worker version two will become available like all of a sudden. And you would, might be in a situation when some of the fetch events, if you were handling them, um, they were done by, handled by version one and some were done by version two. So it's, it doesn't sound like code consistency, right? So current industry, not standard, but best practice, I guess, is that you show the notification for the user that there is a new version available, same as the Chrome does. And they uh, comply, uh, accept the new version at the time when they are ready. So you don't interrupt the update when, <laughs> when they doing something important. Um, so you uh, react on the, uh, the acknowledgement of the new version you do the skip waiting and you reload the page. So you sure that the, the website that user is looking at uh, was downloaded by version two service work or like newer version of service work. So it's uh, still consistent. And also if user opens several tabs of your uh, website, but they acknowledge the ver new version only on one of them, it might be, might be useful to refresh the pages in other tabs as well. So all the tabs have, have the new version, the, the latest, the one that user acknowledged. Mm, so yeah, I'll pause here for any questions so far. Okay, so let's check Cache API. Uh, so it, it probably would be the recap of something that I said before. So it should be easy one. Uh, in short, the cache interface gives the uh, persistent storage for request response objects. And uh, worth remembering, it's only get request, not, no, not other methods. Um, so request response here are like, uh, from capitals just because they are um, like instances of those classes request and response. And so uh, Cache API gives you granular control over all of the your caching capabilities. And of course, if, uh, if it's so low level, you are responsible for most of the things. So uh, the response won't be updated in cache unless you explicitly write code for it. 
it won't uh, be expired or deleted automatically. You need to write code on this, usually on the activate event of the service worker, or yeah, maybe um, in some other cases if you need. There is no uh, version in concept uh, like coming by default. You need to implement this as well. Usually you would want this to distinguish like version, versions, versions of cache and like of the resources. And nice thing about cache API that it's not only available in service workers, even though it's defined in service workers specification, it's available in window and web web workers. It means that you can put something to cache in your uh, regular index.js file if you need, need it or delete it. Of course, cache is asynchronous because service workers are working with them. And uh, they also the cache is used only on secure connections and yeah, in all the browsers that service workers are supported. Uh, we already saw that uh, one origin can have multiple caches uh, and they can have arbitrary names and you define them as a developer. Yeah, an important thing to know that cache storage is limited and moreover, it shares um, space with other uh, technologies like uh, web storages, that's in uh, local storage and index DB and the place for, for code. So, um, and it's one like uh, allocated space uh, number. In anonymous stuff for Chrome, it's like one gigabyte, but probably on devices, it's much smaller. So you need to keep track of uh, this or, and expect any errors, uh, like what exceeded, or you can check the estimated left space uh, with um, navigator storage, I guess, API. Uh, so there is a way to check it, but probably not available for all browsers. Um, yeah, so you should probably handle an errors or errors of the um, yeah, limited storage. And as always should expect that uh, <laughs> browser can delete your cache without notice, but usually it would delete it by the everything or yeah, not delete it at all. So um, your co code in service work, you should expect that something might be missing in cache. Uh, so, and those are methods of cache API. We saw some of them and it's like pretty straightforward um, and granular, yeah. Uh, you can open cache with a name. You can add something to cache, uh, whether it's request instance you add and that method add or at all for, for the list of uh, requests. It would make a request, fetch, fetch request and would add a response to the cache. And also a nice thing that you can provide the string URL and it would do exactly the same. You can delete cache by name, uh, like the whole uh, caches like we did for, um, we, we didn't. We saw uh, for pre-cache, we can delete the uh, whole list of the caches or, caches or we can delete particular request. It, obviously we can look up the cache, use method match and provide request as the key. Uh, probably URL also can be provided. Yeah, not, not sure here. Um, yeah, definitely request can be provided and can uh, like update search parameters with options to narrow it down to something or extent. And yeah, can get one response on or many. And then to gotchas, some of them might be not, not obvious, but um, yeah, something that I mentioned so far, uh, but uh, yeah, better to remember them to, to not uh, yeah, throw your table when you debug service workers. Um, so most uh, ambiguous one is that page refresh doesn't update your website or service work. So it's uh, uh, the way the update flow is implemented in the browser, it doesn't allow that. So you would need to close all tabs 
to get the fresh update on the next start of the website or do the manual skip waiting on install event. Another thing that service worker controls only what it loaded. So on the initial installation, if uh, we download the website first and then register service worker, the service worker won't control our website after registration. We need to refresh the page, sorry, <laughs> or uh, again, do the manual um, you know, operation to claim clients, use the method clients claim on activation event. Location of service worker file matters because it defines the maximum scope that service worker can control. And usually you would want a um, service worker file in the root of your website because the requests that are done outside of the scope of service worker won't be like intercepted by it. So it will be just ignored. And so service worker can be terminated when it isn't in use and run again when needed. Um, so it kind of like, <laughs> well, okay, <laughs> so it's fine. Uh, but then again, it means for us that we cannot share uh, variables or anything between event listeners, right? So we cannot have something in uh, installation phase or activate handler uh, because it's likely service worker would, would shut down between those stages. Not, not typical between those, but uh, again, uh, they cannot do, they can do this. So usually uh, all the var variables defined outside of event listeners should be uh, like ready to initialize multiple times. So for example, if that's the index DB connection, you cannot like do it once, you should be ready to check if there is a connection, yeah, just return it or initialize database again. And that could happen multiple times. So next, I'm going to jump to demo, unless there is any question we need to check out before that. Okay, let me check if you can see anonymous stuff, right? Yes. Nice. So I'm going to, to write the the URL from the first start. Yeah, that's the uh, demo, yes. I found it on MDN website, so it's not like uh, my uh, personal uh, writing. Yeah, but it's good for checking out some examples. So that's basically Star Wars Lego gallery, three images, and that's all. And first we're going to check how DevTools can, can help to debug service workers. So to know if website has running service worker, you need to check this step service worker in application. So there is one service worker and we can see its life cycle. Zoom in. Not too much. Um, so it had installation, wait uh, stage, with zero effort and activation took some time. Uh, what else we can do? Oh, let me check this first. We can stop it. Uh, there is like manual um, way to do it. Uh, usually in code, we would write unregister service worker. So if you don't want it running, uh, we can work with other events that service worker can uh, provide besides push, uh, besides fetch. So we can handle simulate like we uh, service worker received a push message from that server do various things uh, can request manual update uh, what else yeah can stop it and un unregister yeah let's see code for, for it what it actually can do uh, yeah, at first, uh, yeah, here's registration. It's pretty simple. It's ABGS, and we do this. We re <sighs> register. No, I can't. Um, we are on the relative path, right? We are on the origin, and then there is relative path service worker test. So we put our file like this. 
and define a scope. Yeah, there is a way to define a scope for service working. If we didn't provide it, probably it would mean same. Yeah, but for this example, yes, they decided to do it explicitly. And what's inside the file? <sighs> we have handler for installation event and for fetch event. Basically, that's putting in the cache, that's reading for, from cache. And installation, we do pre-caching, right? Uh, that's the list of resources we know that our website would need, basically what it consists from, that's application shell. We put it in version one uh, cache. Actually, you can check where it is. Yeah, we can check sto uh, cache storages. We have only one cache, version one. And we have all the resources here, free images, some logo, index HTML file. Yeah, everything that uh, website needs to work offline. Yeah, <laughs> let's check basically how it can work offline. Yeah, let's refresh. That's the um, network throttling. Uh, it's tricky <laughs> thing, but uh, for this example, it's better than uh, yeah, disabling Wi-Fi on my Mac at all. So we can offline and we refresh the page and basically there is no access to network, but we don't see a failed request, right? We see all of the requests uh, coming from service workers. So they not from network. Uh, usually it looks like this. So it's like, um, in, so instead of the size, uh, the service worker is written. Now let's get back. Oh yeah, we didn't check fetch. So we put cache, uh, some items in cache and here's how we do reading from cache. That's just the filtering out uh, non-HTTP requests. Yeah, the nasty Chrome extension for, for debugging, I guess. Downloads with this extension. And then we check the cache if there is a response. And maybe let's debug it. So we have request for for base URL, right? Uh, and do we have it in cache? Yeah, we do. We just return the cache response, right? And there will be multiple events. I'm going to uh, stop debugging it. And if there is no uh, cache response, we do proper uh, fetch request for, for that uh, initial request that browser wanted to make. And we would cache it yeah, here. Uh, we also need to clone the response uh, just because response is the stream, which can be read once, but we need to use it in places like return to the caller and uh, put in the cache. So we do a copy of it. So we cache it and just return the, the response. And if the fetch, if fetch fails, usually it uh, happens on, on network um, issue, like um, no connection or yeah, something is, is trivial or that. It's not like a non okay status. So if we catch with no connection, we will return this this picture probably my little later. Mm. So this pattern also called like offline fallback. Usually it's not the image, but the whole HTML page. Uh, so if something cannot be done on, with the network, usually you would um, return some page saying that you can't um, always try again later. So what I'm going to do, I'll add one more image and we will see if, um, yeah, if there is update. I hope there won't be. Uh, <laughs> want to illustrate how how tricky service workers can be. So I'm uh, going to add an entry to this image list. Mm. There should be one more uh, look picture. I have an image for it, but I'm going, not going to cache. I'm going to rely um, that um, yeah, on this handler, if there is nothing in the cache, so it would cache it in the fly. So let's refresh the page. <laughs> and there is nothing, like there is no look picture, right? And if we check that image list, it's not updated, even though I saved the, the file. And 
why, why it's happening, it might be not obvious, right? You deployed the change and then there is no update on your website. So it's uh, what's going on actually. So here it is. Um, everything is coming from cache. That response for image list is cached and we just return something from cache. And if we delete it from cache, yeah, let's try. No, not again. Didn't go to the update. Oh yeah, here it is. I had to do a um, hard load, I guess. So we should have the updated image list now. But uh, yeah, I did something tricky that users won't do in production, right? Um, so yeah, if if master loop can provide your um, lesson, so your website won't be updated in a regular way. If you have service worker running, you need to update service worker in order to update your website. So yeah, but everything is cached by now, but let's see uh, how we can see the, the update of service worker. I'm going to, to add look image just to have the dump update here. Yeah, and we will see how the tools can provide the, um, the status of service work. So we have one running already. Uh, that's the very first that we installed. And we have um, number one, like next version is run. And something tricky would happen like the, it won't um, won't activate even though we are very the page with hard refresh. Oh yeah, it did. <sighs> oh my God. Okay, I didn't expect that. Um, yeah, so um, probably users won't do it, right? Um, so they won't get the, the fresh version of the website because they would need to close the tab. Let's do another update. Uh, so this time I'm going to add the uh, activate handler to clean up the cache and I'm going to update the version. So it would seem like I deployed new version of service worker and now it's like version two, cache version two should be used. So I need to uh, keep ca cache for version two only and would expect cache version one to do it be deleted and that activates them. So I'm going to refresh yeah, the re-service worker running. And because version two already passed the installation phase, I now have two versions uh, of the cache. Basically they equal, uh, but still uh, they take twice as much space. Oh yeah, here we can check the space. Uh, yeah, some uh, limit that uh, the anonymous tab, uh, private tab puts on the, um, the on the browser. It's something like one gigabyte for a private tab, but it's more for main window. And uh, it takes twice as much uh, basically space because we have two versions run. And yeah, here's developers bliss update on reload, which makes, things more uh, obvious. Um, so at this point, if I have to um, get the new new version, I would need to close uh, this tab and uh, yeah, open it again. So now I can uh, check this checkbox and it would do actually what I expect. Uh, the number version three, like third attempt to deploy something has activated and you see the activate phase uh, did its job, it deleted cache version one. So I have only version two running. And that's probably about it. Um, yeah, hard, hard refresh. Uh, yeah, did, did bad job with me. Um, I guess that's it for, for this presentation. Yeah, I'm going to um, share what's coming next for September 9 yeah, presentation. So that will be my advanced usage of service workers. Um, it would include uh, caching strategies, uh, some tools for work with service workers, work box mainly if anyone is familiar, and something about backgrounds in KPM. 
So that's about it for today. Thank you for listening. And yeah, I guess uh, any time for any questions, if there are some.